I want to welcome all of you to the first day of our 21-day season of fasting and prayer. I believe the Lord spoke to me and said to make the month of August a season of, of crying out and praying and fasting and turning back to God like never before. Have the church, have Free Chapel, have all of the people who follow you on television, social media, and radio, and anywhere else that the gospel has touched your life through this ministry, through books and different ways that we've reached out, iPods and so on. It's time to fast and pray and break the back of COVID. We must see a divine reversal. We must see a turnaround. We must see in America, and I am very conscious of the rest of the world in critical need also. We're not just praying for America, but I am an American. And with all that we're facing in our economy, with all that we are facing in our schools, with our children going back to school, with all that we're facing with you know, people at home and and uh, their businesses just teetering on, you know, just being destroyed because uh, many are not able to do business. I think of the people who cut hair. I think of the people who do fingernails and people who work so hard uh, in so many fields of life and they just are not able to go back. Those gym owners and people who are really feeling this, and I know some, some gyms and stuff have opened, but in general, uh, there, is a, there is a real slowdown that is taking place and it, it was so predictable that it would when you, when you stop an economy. And I know that we need prayer. I know that we need God. I know that we know, have a God who can stop the plague, who can stop it if my people, you know, the Constitution begins with we the people, but the biblical Constitution, the Word of God and His commitment to us in times of trouble say, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and then will I heal their land. I believe today that this fast that we're on, it began today. I'm going to let you figure out the details of it for your own lifestyle and your own needs, but just set it and stick with it. The greatest thing about a fast is consistency. So it's better to uh, do what you can do and not break it rather than shoot for the sky and shoot for the moon and, and you know, you, you end up breaking the whole fast and you feel defeated and deflated spiritually. And that's not what fasting is about. It's about turning our attention, turning our hearts, turning our body, soul, mind to God and saying, speak to me again and lead us and help us as a nation. This is not one about me or my personal needs that I'm fasting and praying about. Certainly God is aware of that when you fast and pray. But I really want us to pray for America and your nation, wherever you're viewing this from. Pray that God's delivering hand will come on the scene in the month of August, that something will break. I keep hearing the words that a divine reversal will come in August and September that will enable us to fully get back in church, regather and worship with our children being taught the word of God and us standing together. You say, oh, that can't happen that quick. All things are possible with God. And that's why we're going to saturate the month of August for 21 days with fasting and with prayer. Many of you may want to do the Daniel fast. Some of you may want to do one meal a day. That's fine. Whatever you feel, whatever you want to do, um, you know, just be led of God. Maybe you want to fast lunch and breakfast and eat dinner only. And even that kind of, you know, make yourself uh, a list of things that you're going to abstain from as, a, as an offering to God, as an offering to God. Say, Lord, I'm giving this up during this time to draw closer to you and just to say to my own resolve that I will seek the Lord. I will knock. I will ask. I will seek. 
And so we're praying, praying for our church, praying that God would lead us, uh, you know, trying to figure out when we should go back to church and, and all of that. Um, you know, we're praying maybe the end of August uh, is, is probably where we are now. The schools are beginning to open up, and that's wonderful. And that's what we wanted to see happen and pray for these teachers, pray for these students, pray for our national leaders, pray for our president, pray for our Congress. They're passing and negotiating now to help workers and people unemployed that desperately need help. Let's pray for spirit of unity to come on our nation. Pray uh, for those who need this prayer like never before, the, the doctors and nurses and and health workers that are working in the hospitals. So I want us to pray today. And I want you to know that I'm fasting. I'm fasting with you. And uh, I've made up my mind what my fast is going to be. And I'm going these first few days, you know, just seeking God with all of my heart. And I have turned away from everything just to be with him. And I know that God is speaking to you about this. You be led of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you today. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our Savior. And we pray, God, for those who need healing today. We pray for those in, that are represented by families and churches and people who are connected through this prayer time. We curse this COVID-19 virus. We curse every uh, germ in it. We curse it and command it to dry up and die from its roots. We take authority over this disease. We take authority over the spirit of death that is going through our nation and our world. And we pray, heal our land, O oh God, as we repent. We pray, Lord, for our election. We pray for the upcoming days that we know the enemy wants to stir up turmoil and division and hatred. And I just pray, God, that you would cause the church to rise up, that you would cause the church, Lord, to be the light and the love, that you would cause the church to speak the truth in love, that the preachers would preach the truth in love, and that we would see repentance and we would see a breaking of the heart and a turning back to God in this nation. Save us, O oh God. Save us from our enemies. Lord, we bind the spirits of the Far East. We, we love the Chinese people, but we know there's mischief going on now. We know that things are happening, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high ru ruling places, uh, even plots and strategies to destroy our nation and Israel and all these other attacks that are coming, God, whether it be economically or, or through those who would love to hinder our election and cause it to be dishonest or sow seeds of doubt. We pray, God, for America right now. We're at a major crossroads and we need your help. We need your healing. We need your deliverance. We feel a burden, God, for our nation, for our children, for our children's children. We feel a burden, God, for our economy. It is is a serious moment. We feel a burden for our citizens that are sick and afflicted with COVID-19. Oh God, spare them, heal them, disconnect them from those ventilators and enable them to breathe again. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, we pray for our church, Free Chapel. We pray that we would be led by your spirit and be bold to do what you called us to do for such a time as this. We pray for the lost. We pray for our family members, Lord, that they in this season would turn to you, the broken, the lonely, the depressed, those who are becoming more and more addicted, more and more suicidal, more and more uh, hopeless, Lord. That is happening by uh, unprecedented numbers. And we pray, oh God, against these forces, these spiritual uh, evil spirits that are using this pandemic, God, to destroy lives. I pray for marriages and homes and families. And I pray, oh God, that you would move and heal. We pray for the people right now that are fasting and praying. We pray, God, that you would stir their heart, that you would open their ears, that they would hear your voice, that they would know your will in your way. We pray, O oh God, for those who need your help and need your strength. 
strength and needs your peace. Those going through personal battles that are uh, taking them, Lord, to a place they've never been before in stress and worry. May the hand of the Lord come on them today. May the protection of angelic forces be around them and their for uh, their family and their resources. I pray, O oh God, for wisdom. I pray, O oh God, for favor. I pray, O oh God, for a special anointing, for a special time and season in history that we're in. May the power of God come on the church. May the power of the Holy Ghost fill us in a mighty way. We pray for the preachers to preach the truth, to preach not some light gospel, but to preach the truth in such a time as this. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, Lord, we need to know the truth of what is coming on the earth. Even, Lord, the coming of the Lord, let it begin to be proclaimed. The rapture, the, the things that are coming on the earth, Lord, stir my heart, stir others to proclaim the truth and bring men and women to their knees and to the consciousness of God like never before. I pray for the lost. Their eyes are blinded by the God of this world. Awaken them, O God. Those that sleep, it's high time that they awaken. And even in the church, awaken those that slumber, God, that are drifting away, that are going back to the old sins and patterns and ways and, and, and evil that you once delivered them from. We don't want to be like a dog going back to eat his vomit, as the Scripture said. And Lord, when you deliver us, that's what you see in us if we go back to it. So set captives free today and open blind eyes and heal broken hearts and lift and anoint by the power of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family, over my family, over our ministry, over our lives. I rebuke you, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus over the President, over the Congress, over the Supreme Court, over this election. I plead the blood of Jesus, O oh God, over our nation, over our cities, over our streets. I bind the spirit, O oh God, that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I release the spirit that brings life and life more abundantly. Let love, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost be ours as believers. And we pray, O oh God, that we would be bold witnesses for you in Jesus' mighty name we pray and ask. Hallelujah. Turn it around, Lord. Break this virus. Destroy it, O oh God. Touch and create, give creativity to doctors and scientists and researchers, Lord. And bring it to a sudden end, I pray. And heal our nation and help our economy and bless the people's work and businesses and give those jobs who've lost their jobs. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keep fasting and praying. God will honor it every time. And this one's unusual. This is the most, I've never called too fast in one year. Never. In all the years we've been fasting and praying. But I feel the power of God even right now. I feel the power of God on this first day of fasting and prayer. And he's saying, I am with you and I'm going to use you, saith the Lord, that I will bless you. I will raise you. You will know the high places and inhabit the high places for my name's sake. My fame, my glory will be shared again across the globe and people will hear of the mighty Savior and Lord Jesus Christ through and in you. Hallelujah. Be healed, be strengthened, be encouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. You can go online. You can learn more about fasting. We've got incredible material. I've written books and all kinds of articles that will bless your life. I'm praying for you. Keep praying for me.